Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We're back with some more new commanders from Outlaws at Thunder Junction, so let's see what everyone brought to the table. First up is Matt or Marquesa, Dealer of Death. This Grixis deck is all about committing crimes, using Marquesa to generate loads of card advantage. Next up is our Prodigal Son, Return Home, Logan on Tiny Bones, the Pickpocket. This mono black deck is focused on forced discard, then casting opponents' non land permanents from their graveyards with Tiny Bones. Our third player today is Sam on Girid, Mirror of the Wilds. This Naya deck is all about tokens, creating a massive army of tokens to beat down his opponents. Last is Caden on Yuma, Proud Protector. This is also a Naya deck, but built around lands with a desert sub theme, using Yuma for card draw and creature token generation. We're about to hop right to the game, but for that, go and give us a like, subscribe, and read the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. We have links to our social media, public Discord server, deck list, and our Patreon in the description. We are partnering with Dragon Shield. Check out our affiliate link in the description if you're looking to pick up any sleeves, deck boxes, or play mats, and use code SMOOTH5 at checkout for 5% off your order. We are also partnered with Inked Gaming. Our affiliate link is also in the description if you're looking to make any custom play mats. Also, we're running a giveaway right now. Stay until the end of the video for more details. Now, on to the gameplay. It looks like Sam wins the die roll. He'll start off with Creosote Heath, and he says, Welcome back, Logan. Take one damage. The turn is then passed to Caden, and he'll start off with a basic forest, then cast Exploration, and then play Snow Covered Mountain as his second land drop. He'll then pass the turn to Matt, who does Ye Old Island Go. And Logan will just play a Swamp, cast Tiny Bones, and pass back to Sam, who will play Bountiful Promenade and then pass to Caden. Caden starts off with Creosote Heath, and he'll ping Sam for his crimes against Logan. He'll then cast Life from the Loam, no targets. The turn is then passed to Matt, and he'll just play a Snow Mountain and pass. Logan will start off with another Swamp, and then tap for two and cast Arcane Signet. Then after this, he'll tap it to cast Vicious Rumors, so all of his opponents will take one, discard one, and mill one, and then he'll gain one. Matt will discard Aethergust and mill Outrageous Robbery, then Caden discards Dance of the Tumbleweeds and mills Argoth, and Sam discards Rite of Harmony and mills Fabled Passage. Then Logan moves to combat and hits Sam for one, and then he'll pass. Sam starts off with a Plains and then he'll cast Cultivate. He declares he's going to find a mountain to the battlefield tapped and a forest to his hand, and passes while searching. Caden will dredge life from the loam, and he does hit two lands off of this, Field of the Dead and Lotus Field, and also Renin Seven. Then he'll cast Life from the Loam to return those two and Argoth to his hand. He'll then play the Lotus Field as land for turn, sacrificing his two basics, and then Field of the Dead as his second land drop. He'll then pass the turn to Matt, who will just play a basic swamp and cast his commander, Marchesa, and then he passes to Logan. Logan starts off with a Crypt of Agadim, and then he'll cast Sword of Feast and Famine. He'll then move to combat and hit Caden for one, and then pass to Sam. Sam will play a Forest, cast Tribute to the World Tree, and pass to Caden. Who will dredge Life from the Loam again, this time hitting Arid Mesa, Felidar Retreat, and Mina and Den. Life from the Loam is then cast again, getting the Arid Mesa and the two basics. He'll then play his Snow Mountain, and then he has a green floating from his Lotus Field, so he'll tap for an additional two to cast Hazazan. He'll then play Arid Mesa as his second land drop, and then pass the turn to Matt. Who starts off with a Reliquary Tower as land for turn, and then he'll tap for three and cast Laser Screwdriver, and pass to Logan. Who starts off with a Rogue's Passage as land for turn. Then he'll pay two and equip Sword of Feast and Famine to Tiny Bones. Then he'll move to combat and swing Tiny Bones at Caden, who can't block thanks to the sword. And upon connecting, two triggers go on the stack. Tiny Bones' ability will target Mina and Den, and then there's a Sword of Feast and Famine trigger, which Logan will resolve first. So Caden discards a forest, and Logan will untap his lands, and then cast Mina and Den when the Tiny Bones trigger resolves. Oh yeah, and Caden also decides this is as good a time as any to crack that Arid Mesa for a tapped Temple Garden. Anyways, let's move to post-combat now, where Logan will play another Swamp as a second land drop. And then we'll move to Sam's turn, where he plays another Plains as land for turn. He'll then tap for three and cast his commander, Gearhead. This triggers Tribute to the World Tree, which draws him card. And then he'll pass the turn to Caden, who will not dredge. And then he'll kick his first main phase off with an Argoth. Then tap for five and cast his commander, Yuma. When he ETBs, he'll sacrifice his Creosote Heath to draw a card and make a 4-2 plant token. And he's got a second land drop and a Hazazan out, so he'll play the Heath from his graveyard and ping Logan for one. This also triggers Hazazan, which makes 2-1-1 Sand Warriors. And then after this, he'll cast three visits. It'll find him a commercial district, which will surveil him faithless looting to the graveyard, and that's his seventh land with a different name, so Field of the Dead triggers and makes him a 2-2 zombie. Ken will then pass the turn, but Matt stops on end step to cast Alchemist's Gift, targeting Hazazan. Now this is technically a crime, so Matt will pay the one to Marchesa and look at the top two cards of his library. He'll put one to his hand and a mountain to his graveyard. He'll then tap for three and cast Jessica's Will, targeting Sam. Yes, this is a crime, so he does pay the one. 
He looks at the top two cards of his library, puts one to his hand, and a talisman will go to the graveyard. Sam has six cards in hand, so Matt will exile the top three cards of his library and float six red mana. Either Spellbomb, uh, Scoured Springs, and Wired Grave. He'll play Soured Springs as land for a turn, and this pings Logan for one. And it's a crime, so he'll pay one red to the look at the top two. And he bins Toxic Deluge. He'll then cast Act of Treason targeting Tiny Bones, so he'll gain control of him and untap him. It is a crime, so he'll pay the one to trigger Marchesa again. And this time Mana Confluence goes to the graveyard. Then with his last red mana, Matt will cast Aether Spellbomb. And then he moves to combat. Caden's the only one with good permanence in the yard, so he takes another three commander from Tiny Bones. Two triggers are put on the stack. Matt will resolve Sword of Feast and Famine first, untapping his lands. And I think the whole table forgets about the discard a card part. But anyways, the Tiny Bones trigger was chosen to target Felidar Retreat, so Matt will cast that. And since Tiny Bones trigger technically targets a card in a graveyard, that's a crime! So Marchesa triggers again, and he'll pay for the one with Sonic Screwdriver. And Willbreaker is put into the graveyard this time. Matt then passes the turn and discards a Swamp on cleanup, and Logan gets Tiny Bones back. We'll then move to Logan's turn, where he'll start off with a Sangromancer. Then he'll move to combat, and he'll swing Mina and Den at Sam, and Tiny Bones at Caden, and they both just take the damage. Ye old Tiny Bones trick will untap Logan's lands, Caden will discard Colossal Rattleworm, and then Logan will cast Ren and Seven. Also, when Caden discarded a card, Logan will gain three life. Then he'll uptake Ren and Seven and only find one swamp. Grim Hireling, Waste Knot, and Jet Medallion. All go to the graveyard, unfortunately. He'll then play that Swampa's lane for turn and then pass the turn to Sam. And Sam starts off with a Spire Garden. He'll then tap for four and cast Earth of Joe. She'll enter the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters, thanks to tribute to the World Tree, and then she'll make a Mercenary token, which also gets two one one counters. After this, Sam will tap for three and cast Ferocification. Then he'll move to combat and give Earth a haste. And also menace, and then he'll swing for four at Logan, who will just take it. Then post-combat, he'll activate Gearid to make a copy of the Mercenary that entered this turn, and that one also gets extra counters. Earth of Joe will double this trigger, so he'll get two, and then he'll pass. And, uh, well, something bad happens. I'm just gonna let Jason take it away. Jason here. So, there were some issues with our footage, and we lost 15 minutes of gameplay. Luckily, it's just one turn. I have no idea what happened, and I promise you, I will not get down to the bottom of this. Instead, I'm just going to use visual aids to summarize what happened, since we're like 90% sure we know what happened this turn. Caden starts off by dredging life from the loam. I'm not sure what all he mills, but at some point a desert hits his graveyard and that makes him a 4-2 plant warrior, so we're just going to say it happens here. He casts life from the loam, returning three lands to his hand. He then casts Valakut Exploration and follows up with two lands, which I believe are a basic forest and an elegant parlor. This makes him two zombies for Field of the Dead, and unfortunately I don't know what he does with the Surveil or any of the cards that are exiled to Valakut Exploration. I do know that he casts a Map the Frontier and gets a Grasping Dunes, and I'm pretty sure this is a Bristling Backwoods. Yeah, that, that's all I got to work with. Bristling Backwoods hits Logan for one, and then Caden makes two more Landfall triggers for Valakut Exploration, and two Hazizan Shaper of Sand triggers, which make him four Naya Sand Warrior creature tokens. Caden, fearing the crackback, opts for a more modest attack step. He swings a 2-2 zombie and two 1-1 sand warriors over at Logan. When he was organizing his dice and tokens, it looks like he didn't reduce the number of untapped zombies, so he accidentally makes an extra zombie this turn. Alright. Anyway, Logan takes the hit. Caden then moves to his instep and Valakut Exploration triggers, dealing 13 damage to each of his opponents. Hey, wait, wait a, minute. a minute! Well, that's not how that works. It looks like Caden got a hold of the good cactus juice today. The others should only be taking somewhere between 2 and 4 damage this turn, but Caden adds up the mana value of the cards when calculating the damage for some reason. Um, his opponents didn't catch it either, and unfortunately this definitely affects the outcome of the game, but let's see where this goes. Matt moves to his turn, and he starts by playing and cracking a fetch land for a swamp. This makes him 2 2 2 cat beasts off of Felidar Retreat. He then casts Gisa, the Hellraiser. Fearing for his life due to that misplayed Valakut exploration, he casts Feed the Swarm on it. He can't pay for Marchesa's trigger, but Gisa does give him two tapped 2-2 two -two zombie rogues. He loses three life to Feed the Swarm, then looks at Caden's pile of zombies and says, no thank you, have a day, and passes to Logan. Before starting their turn, Logan stops on Matt's instep to cast Bitter Triumph targeting Yuma. This costs three life to cast, but Sangromancer gains that three life back anyway. Logan starts their turn by uptaking Ren and Seven, getting three lands to hand and milling Dothy Voidwalker. I don't know which three lands are gotten, but Logan plays Minus Morgul, Dark Fortress, and a basic swamp as their lands for turn. They move to combat and slap Caden for his transgressions. The Sword of Feast and Famine untaps Logan's lands and makes Caden discard a Crucible of Worlds, which causes Logan to gain three life from Sangromancer. Logan also casts Colossal Rattleworm from Caden's graveyard. 
It's just a 5-5 Trampler for Logan, but hey, it denies Caden a tutor. And finally, having done some modest damage to Caden's board, the turn is passed to Sam, and that's where my narration ends. Jason, you are an absolute hero for going through and noticing the differences between the two board states and going and asking all the players questions of what they remember from their turn. Type 1 in chat if Jason is a W person, or just type W Jason. Anyways, let's get back to that actual gameplay. We are now on Sam's turn, and he'll play Iganjo as land for turn, and then cast Terror of the Peaks. He'll then move to combat and hit Logan for 5 in the air with it because he's able to give it Menace and Haste, and then he'll pass the turn to Caden. Caden starts off by flashing back that Faithless Looting in his graveyard to draw 2 and discard 2. I want to put this to Fairy's Protection with end, end power. After this, he'll play Arid Archway as land for turn, bouncing his Creosote Heath, and a few more creature tokens are created. Then Caden will move to combat and swing his 7 tutus at Logan for 14 damage. He can easily block and kill 3 of them, so that's what he does. He'll end up taking 8 total damage, and because 3 zombies died, he'll gain 9 from Sangromancer, so he actually nets 1 life. The turn is then passed to Matt, and he'll start off by casting Portent, targeting Sam. And bada bing bada boom, it's a crime, he gets 2 more tap zombies and he'll pay the 1 to his commander. Is it Signet is put in the graveyard, and then he'll have Sam shuffle his deck. Matt will then play a tapped Mystic Sanctuary as land for turn, and Felidar Retreat will trigger, and he decides it's time to start putting counters on the gang. He'll then pass the turn to Logan, but Caden stops on end step to cast Archdruid's Charm. This will tutor him a Scavenger Grounds to the battlefield tapped. And what do you know, this gets him even more creature tokens. Logan then decides, also on Matt's end step, he wants to activate Minus Morgul to put a Shadow counter on Tiny Bones. Then we'll move to his turn, where he'll immediately uptick Renin 7 again to get one Swamp to his hand. Two Swamps are then played as land for turn. Then he'll cast a Crypt Ghast. Matt decides this is his Arcane Denial target, and he will counter it. And it's crime, so he'll get two tapped zombies and pay the one to his commander. And another Talisman is put in the graveyard. Logan will then move to combat, and he swings the Shadow Bone Man at Matt. Damage goes through, and we have some triggers. Matt discards a Felwar Stone, and Logan will untap his lands that are already untapped. And the Tiny Bones trigger targets the Talisman of Dominance, which Logan will cast. Also, since Matt discarded a card, Sangromancer will trigger, and Logan's up to 19. The turn is then passed to Sam. And he starts off with a Bonders Enclave as land for turn. And Matt takes this opportunity to tell Sam, if a single Terror of the Peaks trigger targets me, it is getting bounced with this spell bomb. And Sam says, Noted. Sam will then tap for 5 and cast Gired, Conclave Exile. It'll enter the battlefield, and Sam stacks his triggers to have 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters put on it before the Terror of the Peaks trigger resolves. That trigger was targeting Logan, by the way, and since that trigger checks upon resolution to see how much damage it does, it'll deal 4 to Logan. Then the ATB trigger to make the 4-4 Rhino will resolve, and Sam draws a card, and Logan is pinged for 4 again. He'll then use Geared's ability and activate Eartha Joe to make another Rhino. Since it targets, it's doubled. So he'll make two 4-4s, four draw two, and deal eight to Logan. And this actually draws Sam into one of the coolest new cards, in my opinion, from this set, Railway Brawler, which he will cast. When it ETBs, he'll draw a card and deal five to Caden this time. After this, Sam will activate Geared to make another two 4-4 four, four Rhinos. And when they enter, they get counters equal to their power and deals eight damage to Logan. Unfortunately, there's nothing he can do at instant speed to gain any life, so this will kill him. Logan's knocked out. And you know, there was a second trigger, so it'll go at Caden, dealing 8 to him. And then he'll do it one more time, making two more 8 8 and 16 damage blasts Caden off the board. And don't forget, every time Sam makes one of these rhinos, he draws a card. He'll then move to combat and give one of his 8 8s menace and haste, and he'll hit Matt for 8. Then Sam will pass the turn. Matt will stand in step though to sacrifice Aether Spellbomb to bounce one of Sam's 8-8 tokens that's untapped. Crime time means more zombies and he pays one to Marchesa and a mountain goes to the bin. Then we'll move to his turn. And Matt remembers, all these zombies I have have menace. They have a plus one plus one buff and some of them have a 1-1 counter as well. And Sam's only at 20, how many blockers does he have? Can I get rid of enough to kill him this turn? He'll cast and crack Pyrite Spellbomb, hitting Sam's face, and he commits a crime, so he'll pay the one. And Drown on the Lock is put to the bin. He'll then channel Otawara to bounce one of those tokens. Crime time again, he pays the one. Niv-Mizzet goes to the graveyard this time. And then finally, he'll tap for two and abraid one of his untapped 3-3 mercenaries. And then he'll move to combat and flunge everything at Sam. Because the 1-1 one, one in Menace, this is very deadly for Sam. A lot of different blocks are tested out, but unfortunately the best blocks for Sam still have him take 18 damage. And since he's completely tapped out, there is nothing he can do about this. So he will concede to his fate and take a lethal dose of damage. Making Matt 
and Marchesa, Dealer of Death, the winners. Congratulations! Hey, welcome to the end of the video. That was really exciting. I did not expect that surprise win from Matt. Anyways, I know why you're all here. It's for information on the giveaway. Well, if you didn't see last week's video, all you have to do is go to that video and leave a comment down below, and that will enter you in our giveaway. Well, you might be wondering what we're giving away. Well, we're giving away a pre-con from last week's video, the Olivia one, and a pre-con from this week's video, the Yumo one. So, go enter now! And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to let us know down in the comments below and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, while you're down there, check out PointyEars.com. They made those awesome life counters that you saw in this video. They're actually really well made. Go check them out! Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a comment if you did. No mean comments, please. You'll hurt my feelings. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a smooth day.